Sorry, That's okay. <laughs> I forgot to hit that from the start. We're, we're just not going to be as competitive as the other offers. So it's just like looking at like, all right, we're going to go look at homes that have been sitting on the market a little bit. Those are the ones that negotiate. So I think it's important to have that conversation from the beginning. Otherwise, if they find a house that just came out, they love it. And you're going to go write this offer like, okay, what can you afford? They're going to be broken hearted. I'm like, well, why are you just telling me that now that I would totally the cost? So I like to have it up front. Yeah. For me, it depends. You have mostly BU clients. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. BU gives us clients very differently than Zillow. Zillow is appointment based. BU is just right. like here's a client. So with that, it's I never. It's always in person. It's a call or it's a Zoom appointment. I almost never do it in person anymore. It's the first thing every single time. Zillow is different. Zillow, you have to go meet them. So Zillow sometimes has to be in the house. But if I can pull them back, if they're not writing an offer the first meeting, what I usually like to say is, all right, I know that this feels fun and exciting to go do showings, but you're you're out of order. I'm like, we need to sit down and get on the same page about everything. You're gonna have a much happier experience, a much more success, successful experience if we have this conversation. And that usually works because then they know that I'm not like trying to like push them into a house too. I think it makes them feel like we're taking our time to do things the right way. But I'll tell you, if I don't have a buyer's consult, my conversion rate is much, much lower. I'm like probably 99% conversion rate on my buyer consult versus like 25 if I don't have it. So let's go back to the Zillow side of things and the buyer consults. You schedule the appointment, you go meet them. How then would you approach a sit-down buyer consult with them? Depends on the situation. Like if they're the ready to write right there, then, yeah, then I don't then, worry about it. Right. right. If not, then yeah, let's go have coffee. Let's talk a little mm -hmm. bit. If they can't go out, we'll pick up the phone. Um, it's kind of a process. Even if they do write, sorry. No, they pick up. Even if they do write, if we lose, I use that as an right. opportunity. Sometimes if the house is already sold, I use that as an opportunity. Hey, we had an appointment for this time. Let's switch that over and meet at the office and do a consult instead so that we can create search and get on the same page and start your home buying experience. Um, otherwise, if, if we just do showings, then I like to, yeah, rein them back in. It doesn't always work. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't always work. I don't think so. I do a buyer's consult in a house. It's challenging. It's, yeah. I think some people are a little bit weary even on the first meeting that they don't really want to go meet you at a coffee shop and they haven't really necessarily you're not quite, you don't quite have them obviously yet, right? I think where I found effective is if I can just capture them for like 10 minutes after the showing while we're standing outside their car or whatever, yeah, yeah. we're standing outside my vehicle, whatever, right? At that point, I can start bringing some value because especially in this market, I think everyone can relate. You show up to the house, you're meeting the person for the first time, there are four other agents there. You don't even know which person is yours yet. And uh, <laughs> you go through the house, there's several other people in there. It's hard to build rapport when you're kind of like, you know, what's the, you know, tiptoeing around the house like in a dead silent situation because there's six other people in there. It's, it's hard to build that. So I think just instead of trying to take them somewhere else, just kind of slowing things down outside the house and doing it there, even if it takes 10 minutes, I think has been, has done wonders for me. Right. And even better, you know, we probably all can improve. Have a phone call before you go see the house. I mean, spend 30 minutes on the phone and do a buyer consult. It doesn't have to be in person. Yeah. Just ask them if they have time. Okay. We have a question from Zoom, but Crystal, I also saw that you had shot your hand up. Did yeah, I was just going to ask, so like, I typically don't do a buyer consult either. Because I feel like they're like, that's weird. I'm not meeting you. I'm not going to talk to you. Yeah. Like, just have the conversation. But like, at what point do you, like, I'm not a document pusher, so I have a really tough time going back to my clients after I've developed a good relationship with them, asking them, like, hey, we now, like, been out three times with this. And they can, like, how do you get them to sign a buyer? Like, what's your approach to the buyer draft? That was going to be my next question. First. That's the way I think about it. I never asked for a buyer rep ever. I earn the business, and when it's time for them to make the offer, I've already earned the business. So there's no, they don't have a choice. But that's so not I, but I've been burned a couple times by that. Like, and yeah. after I'm like, wow, we, we actually do have a great relationship. They've asked me all these questions. We've developed rapport, and then we just like, oh, we walked to this house today. We 
I do it when I write my first offer. So yes. do I. I know it's a long answer right. because they say do it as soon as you start to learn homes. I think them. if you're not I, doing a buyer consultation at some point, you have to say like, "This is we're we're working yes, together." Yeah, yeah. I think maybe that that would be the way it is. If the buyer consultation and the expectation is that it's then I also think it's just kind of the cost of doing business. Yeah. Everyone is different, and if you would have shown them paperwork, they probably would have ran. Those are yeah. people who are not loyal. You maybe couldn't have done anything to earn their business. You can't always blame yourself. There are people in this world that aren't going to mesh with you, and you have to allow yourself to go through yeah. that. Well, I mean, I have a great relationship with these people now, and I've been out with them now three times. They bring their parents, like we joke, we have great yeah. conversations. And I like to me, they feel like good people. So no way they're gonna like walk away from me. But yeah, like there's still that thing deep down there. Like, what if they, they go with someone else? It's honestly so you easier. Can, I them. think if you have good relationships with them now, then bring it up and say, hey, we've seen a few calls. I do need that buyer representation sign. I need to know my sweet are you, and I want to make sure that you understand all that. Well, why do you think? My rep is so important, I guess, would be a question for me. I don't, I never have, and I just feel like when she said she's afraid of the even if you have a buy rep, right, yeah. still go I can still open a house and sign another one with someone else and buy it. The buy rep really doesn't decide. Yeah, I don't know. So, I guess I just, but you can be like, hey, you want to do it. Well, not if you don't have to carry carrying college on that phone. Yeah, if they're under contract with you and they buy another house with another agent, oh, they yeah. owe you that money. They, they owe you the commission, like, right? But like, if you would have to. That's probably going a little. This is probably all going a little deeper in the weeds so than we intended. No, it's so many times. That's a good question. No it, chasing down. Like if they showed them the house, they sent them the house. They wrote the offer. They're going to get the commission. Right, but with that buyer rep, you could go after the buyer for purchasing yeah. with yeah. another yeah. agent. Yeah. But are you, yeah. as the yeah. agent, yeah. going to do that? That's why the line that says the buyer is responsible for paying your commission is so important. Because they, if they buy a house with another agent after signing a buyer rep with you, they owe you the commission on that house, plain and simple. But to Carter's point, how often is you, the agent, going to go after that, right? right? Like a lot of times, it's more worth your time to just focus on right. your next three deals right. yeah, than it is chasing commissions around. You if know what someone, I mean? If someone were came up to you and was like, "Oh, I want to write a offer on this house," you would ask them, "Do you have an agent?" Have you signed any paperwork? So, like, would yeah. that deter people from making a decision? Like, oh yeah, I have signed paperwork with someone. Sometimes they don't understand. They've done it. Sometimes yeah. it's an honest mistake. And yeah. sometimes people just lie yeah. and say and that yeah. they yeah. haven't signed yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I personally, I don't know if I've ever had that happen where they signed a buyer rep and then went with someone else. Um, but even if they did, I, yeah, I don't think I would go after them because I just think that creates a bad reputation. They're gonna like talk yeah. smack about you on the internet. Then so it's like yeah. it's not worth your time. Just yeah. focus on the next people. Honestly, maybe you, you got the bullet with that client. They probably are horrible. Yeah. It sounds like they're bad people. Well, it's just like <laughs> that's so much time and then it's yeah. hours and hours. Right. And so like, you might want to make a rule for yourself: one, by distance, and two, by the number of houses you're showing. When you're driving a certain amount of time, or you show more than five houses, you say, "Hey." It's just a rule because I don't get paid until I'm under contract or until we close on something. Um, I don't show more than five houses to a client unless I'm under a representation agreement with them. Um, something against you has to spend burning your past. Bring it up with that. Make it yeah. like blame the paperwork, blame the industry, blame your past clients, and see if that works for you. But I would just do it on a case by case. Like, I'm okay not pushing back. Right. As long as you're okay with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, be careful about some of the conversations that you're having right. because you don't technically represent them. Um, but okay, the other question we had is I've had a lot of leads who have their heart set on a property and it isn't available. They don't want to see other properties either in person or in the MLS search because it wasn't the one they wanted. Then when they completely unresponsive, how do you deal with that and get the needle to move? Yeah, it's just like the they're going to keep looking until, until they find another house that they like and they're going to click the button again. I would say, to be honest, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say 
spend time trading and banking and banking for your business, and I can show value to someone else and just right. Them. Yeah, I think those that's been an objection I have as a manager. So, and I've spent so much time with that that I, in my experience, that's the one that you're probably not going to get because if you can't get face to face with them and you can't show them value, they're never going to see value in you saying, What do you think about this one? You're not going to convert that? them, right? So they don't know you. There's no reason that they would. Yeah. Crystal, did Cheryl fill you in on the question? Yeah. I think I'm still kind of nervous with them, but not very often. Yeah. <laughs> you know, still check in at least once or maybe twice, uh, once every two weeks. Give them a, you know, listing, say, hey, I know you were looking at this area and you're not really wanting to get where I was, but I found this one. What do you think? Give me your thoughts. They reply, they do, they don't, they don't. It's like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Those people don't get a lot of my time. Yeah. Perfectly honest. If they're not willing to commit to me, I'm not really willing to commit to them. We have drip campaigns, so I would say send them up on a drip. Did you send those templates over to follow box? I was in there today looking at some and it says crystal, 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 crystal. Yeah, so I mean, I don't have to do it. I was just Can we, yeah. well, we're before we go too far into this because people are probably actually wondering what drip campaigns are. Yeah. So can you back that up for a moment and share what that is? Well, there are pre-made ones. So follow up box is a good system for this specific thing. You can create touch points, like pretty automated emails or text messages. I can't remember exactly what you can do. I ran into problems. I was starting to touch like a 24 touch program and then I couldn't do everything I wanted to do. Well, I set a task and then I just put the task as like the templates that I have and I have a system yeah. that I have that I've developed from, honestly from previous brokers, but they, uh, and, and I just say temp one, temp two, right. temp three. So each task this week is temp one, well, three weeks, I have another task that'll be temp two, and then temp three. So it's the same, and I just copy and paste it, and it's done. And it takes me oh, you 10 have minutes to follow up with 20 people. Well, a drip campaign is automated. That's the yeah. difference between that and a drip campaign. I just feel like He's setting up reminders. Oh, yeah, they can. Yeah, and sometimes. I like so I like customize. I think it's a balance of mixing the two, but if you're talking about someone who's not willing to go on the MLS, who cares? Yeah. Set them up on something that's not yeah, personal. Right. Who cares? They're either going to change their mind or they're not. At least they're doing something. Yeah. But it's about minimal effort and getting touches. So. Okay. Um, just for fun, what was your quickest conversion? Like, for a buyer like you, met them wrote maybe they wrote the first one and oh. then on the opposite like what's your longest that's a fun one yeah. my first ever sale was it was a realtor.com lead that came in at like 9 a.m by 5 p.m. we saw the house. By 9 p.m. we had submitted the offer. 9 a.m. the next day it was accepted. Oh. And at my team lead at that point in time was like, don't get used to that. <laughs> you're like, this is that was your very first one. one. You said that was your very first sale. Ever. Uh, yeah. You were like, this is easy. Yeah. <laughs> I was so pumped. Um, and then my longest I'm probably working with right now. They've been looking for a house for three years. Not with me. One year almost with me. My buyer rep is going to expire. I've never had that happen. And they just, they have no money. And I'm like, if you would have bought three years ago, you could have sold by now. Geez, what are you waiting for? <laughs> but they're they're hovering around a house. Everybody pray for me to the real estate gods. <laughs> I had about a year between times where I met them and then Looked at several, several houses and got approved, and then we go out for a meet out every time. And then he travels for work and goes for six months. He's like out of the state, like in Texas and in Colorado, like all over. So he's like taking a break. And I switched brokerages, teams, all of that. Then in the middle of this year, he calls me up. He's like, "Hey, it's Jeffrey. You remember me? You ready to go look at some houses again? I'm back from Minnesota." I'm like, <laughs> I don't figure out who you are, but yeah, I remember you. And then, yeah, a week later, we're in a contest. Nice. Cheryl? I'm going to say probably four months. Um, for me, I just, it's really their motivation. If they're ready to go, then I'm ready to go now. If they're just like looking every now and again, um, then I go with their flow. I don't rush them. Um, I have 
have one lady that I'm actually inventorying most of the May. Um, and she wants to look at all the homes, any deal, every single home we've looked at, and everyone that comes out, we look at it. And I just stop her, I'm like, all right. So, like, really look at these homes prior to seeing them in person because I know there was one that you really liked at the very first house that you toured and you gave her an offer, and now you're comparing every house to that one house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's the hard part, you know. They, and that's yeah. gold, right? Because you can use that right. with future buyers, right? Like, you know, when they're like, oh, I think I want to write on, we like this one, but we don't know if we're ready to write. Okay, well, don't be that person who then is going to regret right. not writing on this house and compare every other. Them, like, okay, we want this house, we be okay with that. Yeah. So when they think of it that way, same like, thing with the offer too, like, the yeah. first time, like, certain uh, terms. Terms, yeah, where you're like, where, you know, you go to see the next house and then or you're going to write the next offer and they're like, yeah, we should have just did 10,000 more in that last house, like X, Y, Z. And so I think it's important that the house is okay. Like, you know, that price, it, it won't be that price that you're okay. Well, yeah. Right. And I think they need to fail sometimes yeah. so that they know the next time. Usually like three times. I mean, <laughs> three? Wow. No, no. One usually gets it done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. What were we saying? Oh, about writing. Okay, so when you show someone one house and they drag their feet about writing the offer, but they love the house, I will remind them, how long have you been looking on Zillow before we came here today? You've already done all of your showings. You've done plenty of tours. You know what's on the market. Can you please trust yourself right now? And if you love this house, trust that you know that you actually love this house. You don't have to survive to know you love this and that usually will help them get over like this feeling like they're obligated to see at least five or something. Um, I've had some other And I would say your clients under contract already shut off their MLS. Yes. Oh my God. That is huge. Yeah. Like, that they is will huge. Keep oh looking even too. after writing an offer. And that's scary. I'm the opposite. I never shut it off. Oh, and they'll keep looking even after they close, and sometimes it helps them find well, yeah, it. Yeah, turn it back on after they close. But, <laughs> right, but, but <laughs> when you're under contract, yes, stop. Yes. Shut it off. I don't yeah. have that problem. No, I shut it off. I can see both sides, but yeah. you know, there. This is again like this whole topic today. Everybody does things so right. differently, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong. I mean. Yeah, so some right or wrong things. Looking, but... Don't shut their search. Oh, off. right, exactly. Yeah, yes. so that just happened today. That someone I wrote an offer with all the way back in February. I just saw it popped up. They opened their thing today, and so I followed up. Like, yeah. Boom, we got to show. Them. Right. I have a couple of buyers that are now looking again from six months ago, but I kept their MLS. Well, right. Sometimes you even find out that they went and looked at something with someone else too, and then you have to see them looking, so you reached out, and maybe they. Right. Forgot about your lost your number or whatever, and get you that second chance. Right, Hannah. Um, do you guys have a good client who are under contract usually like in a period and want to look at another house while they're still in it? And do you guys show houses? I don't. Um, I don't think shut it off. Right. Show it's only ever happened maybe once or twice. I've been a real estate agent for six years. And I struggle because, again, it's not about me and it's not about the sellers, it's about the buyers. So I try to remind myself that a lot. And if they want to see another house, which is like they're not happy with the house they're under contract on, and I want them to be happy. So I will like say, hey, we're under contract. Yeah, we have the inspection period. To me, this is an indication of something else. So can we have a bigger conversation? And and like what's going on? Are you not happy with the inspection results? Are you still have to repeat? Yeah. Tell me what's going on and see the bigger conversation that needs to be had on the house. Or I don't think you should go and show them the house right away just because they want to see it, but rather having that conversation because that's a red flag. Like, okay, they want to look at something. And I, yeah, even though I'm representing the buyers, I try to remind them that there are sellers in the situation and it's not kind to go under contract on a house and cancel. Even if there are valid reasons, we should be really, we should be careful and and really think through our decision because that seller is probably going to lose money because of us. I've lost clients from that conversation, so I will say. But I think it's important to have that, that buyer's consult too, like when they're ready to put an offer, like build that these are 
going to be consequences once you're on the contract. before we have them leave. Well, Crystal wasn't aware of this, so she doesn't have to participate if she doesn't want. I'm gonna ask them to kind of go over how they present agency, because this is another thing that I get a lot. Um, and in the meantime, if anybody on Zoom has questions and wants to put them in the, in the room um, or in the chat, let me know. Otherwise, Carter did agree to kind of review this on how he typically presents it. Um, so I'm gonna have him take over. Oh. Perfect. Well, I think, well, first of all, it's important to let them know that this is not content. This is clearly for their educational and their, for their formative purposes. And then I just say, you know, the whole purpose of this is to like understand what the relationships and the different types of relationships are in real estate. And then I simply go through it and say, you know, there's the sellers and their agent, there's the buyers and their agent, there's the facilitator who basically does paperwork and really doesn't represent the other party. And then there's your dual agent, which can be whether I represented you as a seller or even someone from the same broker represented the seller and, and, and I'm representing you, right? And then I go in and say another important part of this, even probably even more important part than that, is understanding what my duties to you are as an agent and kind of what you owe as buyer, right? And then if you know, I go through that, you know, the loyalty, obedience, uh, where is it? Well, be, obedience, disclosure, confidentiality, reasonable care, accounting. First, I always emphasize the obedience part because I think it's really important for people to know that they're in the driver's seat and that at some point in time during this process, it's fairly likely that I'll either say something or recommend something that maybe you're not comfortable with or maybe that you just don't want to do. And that's okay because this is your investment, it's your decision, and it's going to be your home. So at the end of the day, you're always going to make the decision. Right, uh, if you're the one driving the car, I'm just holding the GPS. Love it. All right. Anybody have anything at home? Well, this camera is really following me, but um, if not, I want to thank all three of them. I feel like this was actually a really great meeting. Lots of valuable information in here. Um, if there's no questions at home, we're going to let everybody take a quick break and we'll see you at noon for our team meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.